What's going on, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to British Schools Explained. Um, I've been wondering for quite a while how the UK education system works because I know it's completely different in a lot of ways from how American school system is set up. Um, I'm wondering some of the things like, are British schools, do they have a top-down approach uh, or... Are they broke up kind of like in America where uh, schools are mostly funded on the local level uh, through property taxes and whatnot? Um, I really don't know anything about the uh, British school system. Except I do remember hearing in another video about was it public school versus state school? I think that's I think you guys may call are what we call public school, a state school, but I'm not 100% sure. Or maybe that was a private school. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, check this video out and see uh, what we can learn about the uh, British school system. Hi, I'm Siobhan Thompson and this is Anglophenia. Now, many of the most beloved stories from the UK are set in schools, all the way from Tom Brown's school days to Harry Potter and the History Boys. But the British school system is remarkably different from that in the US, so much so that it's often the first thing that Americans ask me to explain to them. So, here is the Cliff's Notes version of how the British school system works, but study up because there's going to be an exam at the end of the video. Public schools and state schools. What Americans call private schools are called public schools in the UK, and what you call public schools, we call state schools. They're Wait. Okay, now I'm... Okay, that's not what I was thinking. Uh, okay, I thought you called state schools what we call public schools. Oh, yeah, you do. Wait, no. Yeah, okay. Okay, what we call public schools, you guys call state schools. What we call private schools, you call public schools. That's interesting. Why would, why would a private school be called a public school? All right, here in the US, a private school is is uh, a school you basically, you go generally pay out of pocket for. You know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't see any times the US government is gonna pay for a private school necessarily, uh, but public schools are generally always funded by taxpayers. And that's something I'm curious about is the, okay, anyway, let's continue. <laughs> There are also some private schools that don't call themselves public schools, they call themselves private or independent schools. Okay. But most of the ones that Americans are thinking about, you know, where people live in a mansion and wear a very silly uniform, hmm. are called public schools. Got it? Most state schools these days are comprehensives, meaning that they accept students of every academic ability. But there was a system that's still in place in some areas of secondary modern and grammar schools. There, kids Heard take a schools. test at 11 to see what type of school they'll go to, the grammar schools being more academic and the secondary moderns more vocational. Church schools. All right, hold on, I wanna get that, let's see. Hold on, let's look at that again. Comprehensives. So can be a part of state schools, and those are either secondary, modern, or grammar schools. So this would be a place someone perhaps may learn to do a particular trade, is what I'm guessing, since it's more vocational. And this is more of just, a, is this more advanced in a way? Is this where people would, okay, people would potentially go to, kids would potentially go to school uh, I don't know how. How do you what? Do you, how do you describe a grammar school? Isn't that like the academics are more advanced or something? Wow, this is a little more complicated than I thought it would be. I thought it would just be you know public and private in the U.S. and then the equivalent over here. But then you break down the what are technically public schools in the U.S. to these other versions. Maybe that's kind of like our, um, what do you call it? We have, uh, what do you call that word? I can't think. We have a type of school that's kind of charter. We have charter schools. Now, if anybody that's from the UK knows what a charter school in the US is, is that what this would be? I don't know. I, I don't quite understand exactly what this is, but anyway, uh, 
I understand that it's a little more complicated than the U.S. it seems. Church schools. Schools. There's no separation of church and state in the UK, so many schools, both state and public, are church schools. Oddly, this doesn't translate into later church attendance, which is much lower in the UK than in the US. I've heard sort that. Sort of like how most people don't use algebra after the age of 18, I guess. Uniforms. Pretty much. Isn't that so true that, uh, at least in the US, we're taught all this random stuff that. I've literally never used one time in my life after I got out of school. All this, all these different types of math and things like that. It's, I, I definitely believe that it would be better to kind of have an updated version of school to, um, to kind of fit modern times. I mean, we obviously need to know the basics. People need to learn how to how to read and write and do basic math and learn some def basic history and, and things like that. But then from then on, it should be more vocational in nature, in my opinion, that people that, like, if you're not going to be an engineer or, or some kind of profession profession that needs more advanced math, why do you need to learn calculus and trigonometry? It's just kind of one of those things. It's just, I knew it was a waste of time for me when I was in school. And I still know all these years later that it was, it was still a waste of time. And I would have much preferred to, I don't know, learn to, I don't know, build something in that time, learn to learn to cook, even learn to do taxes, learn to, you know, the ins and outs of setting up a business, learn to, I mean, all on and on. There's so many different things I would have much preferred to learn in school than all this advanced nonsense that I did, that I, I've never used in my entire life. Uh, history is one of those things that I wish I'd paid more attention to in school, but at the time I, I didn't find interesting. But definitely, uh, that's definitely something I'm more interested in now. But, you know, I don't know. I just think that, you know, also so many different things that kids now can just easily look up at any moment they want to or taught or taught in school still, at least in America. And it just, I don't know. I do believe one thing I disagree with, though, is these people that say, oh, we don't need to teach basic math and things like that because they have calculate. No, I disagree with that. I think we should. They're definitely, you need to teach children all the main subjects to a minimum level. Um, but the advanced stuff, you know, is where I'm like, you know, if I'm not planning on using advanced math, why am I be, you know, why teach kids that until they get to a place where like, you know what, I want to go and explore being an engineer. Okay. Then you need to go and learn some advanced math. All schools have some kind of uniform, ranging from a school jumper all the way up to the white tie and tails that they wear at Eton. The idea behind it is to create a sense of identity and school pride. See? Eh. <sighs> Still fits. That's uh, one thing that I would say if someone mentioned, said, hey, what do you think of when you hear the phrase British schools. The first thing that pops in my head is seeing kids with uniforms on. Um, in America, I don't really think that's much of a thing. Uh, I've never really, at least in public schools, which, which are, how do I, which were, I can't even remember what it was for you guys. What was that? I'm already confused. Oh, uh, state, state schools, right? Yeah. Our public schools are your state schools. I got to remember that. And our public, our pri our private schools are your public schools, man. Okay. Anyway, uh, I always think of uniforms when it comes to British schools, but when it comes to America, I never think of uniforms in our public schools, which is your state schools. Uh, so is that still a thing? Do generally all the schools across the board, whether they're your state schools or whether they're your public schools. Yeah, I got that right this time. Uh, do they generally all have uniforms? She made it sound like that was the case. I'm guessing some schools don't, but, you know, whenever I've seen like any type of, I don't know, TV show or somehow 
videos of any type that showed British kids in school, I've always noticed them with uniforms. I never experienced that, obviously, but I think it's kind of cool. I'm sure the kids sometimes don't like it, but as an adult, I look at it and I do think it probably creates a level of camaraderie with the students and a, a type of pride for their school in a way. Uh, so I think kind of like a sports uniform in a way does that. Uh, I kind of think that's pretty cool, actually. And it's, it's something that I think would be beneficial for more American schools to adopt. Prefects. In British schools, older students can be chosen to be prefects. Oh, one more thing I want to say about the, the uniforms is also, if you have un uniforms, you know, it, it makes it to where more well-off students aren't, how, how do I put this? The, the poorer students don't have to feel as bad about not being able to keep up with the latest styles, if you will, of the, of the more well-off students. You know, that can be something that can, it's not traumatizing to adults generally, but it definitely can feel traumatizing to certain children. Uh, you know, to have that experience of their parents not being able to buy them, you know, new clothes every year and things like that. And so if there's uniforms, then it definitely uh, makes sense that that would make everybody feel a little bit more, I don't know, even, a little bit more together. I feel like it would, uh, again, it would bring kids together in a way. Sorry for uh, stopping there. Let's continue. Being a prefect sounds super cool, but in reality it mostly entails policing the lunch line and stopping the younger kids from hitting each other. You do mm -hmm. get a cool badge though, so that's something. Most schools also have a head boy and a head girl who attend school council meetings and head give a speech boy. at prize giving at the end of the year. Oh, prize giving is the closest thing that we have to a graduation ceremony. Wait, you guys don't have graduation ceremonies? So, how does that work? So do you, once school is over with, you just don't go back for any type of thing? She said there was some sort of prize giving. Is that, I mean, she said that's the closest thing you had to a graduation ceremony. So I don't know. Does that mean that you guys have some sort of general get together or celebration where where these high school kids get their diplomas or does that not exist? Do they just get their diplomas mailed to them or something? How exactly does that work? Um, also guys, I just want to mention if you, if you have any other videos that go even deeper into how the British school system works, please let me know. I'm also curious how the Irish school system works, but uh, I haven't really found a video on that so far and really this was one of the few videos i really found that looked like it would probably be pretty good so um they seem to not be seems to not be very many videos about this topic out there exams national exams are a huge part of the british school experience it's all very simple you take gcse's at 16 and then a levels at 18 which are kind of like ap exams but different also in scotland they study for hires instead of a levels and gcse's used to be called o levels also as levels happen in the middle of a levels look it's just this is the most complicated bit i promise i started to say she didn't she say it was like simple or something uh, that didn't seem very simple. It seemed like, what? Uh, so it, it sounds like there's only a couple of times the kids really take end of year exams or like these big exams. Um, generally speaking, from what I understand in modern American schools, uh, children usually take a year in exam every single year. Um, before they move on to the next grade. Now, the exam doesn't necessarily mean they're going to, is going to dictate whether they move on, but it's about the fact it, it, it kind of gauges where they're at, basically, compared to uh, the rest of the student body, the rest of their peers. So to give you kind of like what percentile in reading, what percentile in math they're in compared to uh, their their peer level in a way in a way so do you guys have something similar there or is it just kind of like you get to 
I don't know, the sixth grade, the sixth grade, for example, and then you take an exam before you move on to middle school, and then you take an exam before you move, move on to high school or something like that. Revision. This is just what we call studying for exams. It's oh. not a biggie, just a lot of people seemed confused about it. Juniors and seniors. Instead of the American system of elementary school, middle school and so on, most British schools are divided into juniors and seniors. Junior school, also called primary school, is for 4 to 11 year olds, and senior school is for 11 to 18 year olds. Oh. At some public schools they divide it up a little differently. They have pre-prep from 4 to 7, prep from 7 to 13, and then senior from 13 to 18. Wait. Four? Wow. Are four years olds are in... Like, not just uh, preschool, but actual, the equivalent of what we talk, we call elementary school here, um, which generally speaking, we have a kindergarten and then first grade through 12th grade. Um, kindergartens are in elementary school with the, uh, you know, just like first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade are. So it's kindergarten through fifth grade in elementary Generally speaking, you have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade are is called uh, middle school or junior high in a lot of cases, and then obviously ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, you know, is high school. How exactly does that work here? It, it sounds a little bit different. I mean, we got juniors up till age, I guess, up till age twelve. I guess you count age eleven in that, and then. 12 to 18. So that seems like it seems like you start earlier and you in elementary school or well, our equivalent of elementary school earlier and then there's really no middle school and it just goes straight to the uh, more high school um, at an earlier age. So I don't know if that's is that starting at 12 or is that starting at 13? Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Sixth form. Sixth form. The last two years of school is called the sixth form, uh. divided into the lower sixth and upper sixth. The name is a hangover from a previous, more complicated system of naming classes which has stuck around for some reason. In many schools, sixth formers are given a lot more freedom than the other students, often being allowed to wear their own clothes instead of school uniform. Hmm. Cool. University. So I'm guessing that is probably something the kids in the UK look forward to. If, if in general, like it seems most schools, most kids throughout, no matter what school they're in in the UK, generally wear uniforms. If that is correct, I'm guessing that by the time they get to the last two years, they look forward to being able to wear whatever they choose. Um, that's interesting, okay. University, which I think is basically the equivalent of what, wait, hold on, hold on, let me see. You apply to do a single subject at British universities and only study that one thing. No maths or language requirements or any of that other stuff that you have to do at American colleges. Bachelor's degrees generally take three years and you know what, well, let's just cover this in another video. It's very complicated. Ah, uh, I think I get what she's saying and I totally agree with it. So in American schools, uh, if you, you know, if you go to college, you go, you know, University, we pretty much consider both of those interchangeable. Uh, universities generally, are, when someone calls a college a university, it generally means it's usually a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit uh, better of a school, if you will. A little bit, probably a little bit more expensive. And, uh, you know, yeah, anyway. Um, like Harvard University, you wouldn't ever call Harvard Harvard College or Yale College or Princeton College. You would call those universities, but uh, there's definitely some, uh, you know, universities that people will call colleges. But it sounds like basically you get out of the equivalent of high school, and then you apply to a college, a university, and you go to that university, and you don't have to take all these pre. Uh, these like pre-classes um, of just random generic general education. It sounds like you basically go directly into studying for what you are going to school for, which totally makes sense. It's one of the things I th always thought were was so really so ridiculous here in America. It's almost on par with the same 
uh, thing of like, you know, in high school, you know, 11th grade, you got to take calculus. And it's like, what if what if the person is planning on getting out of school and I don't know, going to a trade school to learn how to be a motorcycle mechanic, for example, or going to uh, start their own landscaping business or something like that? You know what I mean? Like they don't need calculus or trigonometry or something like that. It's just, you know, I think, you know, you teach kids basics and then you allow them to kind of dictate what they want to learn from that point on for the most part. So there we go. Are there any things about British schools that you have questions about? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Also, if you have any other questions about British culture, you can tweet us at Anglophenia and maybe your topic will be covered in another video. All right, that was informative in a very short video. I was, I was hesitant on this video when I started, but it was the top video for uh, looking up British schools, right? And... Um, I, I was hesitant because it was so short, but it was very informative, actually. I learned quite a bit about uh, how, how the school system works over there. Does the Irish school system work pretty much the same, or, or is it definitely different to the point that I need to learn about that separately? And I'm also curious, I don't, she didn't really answer this question that I kind of had earlier in this video, and that was the fact, I think I said that earlier, um, that is, are British schools kind of a top-down approach, so to speak? Like, is there like a central location, maybe London, for example, that all the curriculum comes out of, all the funding for the schools come out of, and things like that? And and are all the schools throughout the UK funded on an equal percentage basis based off of kids, or how does that work? Because in, in the US... Um, the reason a lot of schools fail, right, is simply because school systems are funded through property taxes on a local level. So it, it, as you can imagine that, I don't know, let's say you go to Alexandria, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C., one of the wealthiest uh, areas in the country. You know, um, a lot of those a lot of those people work in government and they're, you know, and they're in the, they're just getting paid very, very well. You know, I think the average household income there may be, I don't know, I don't even know, what is it, $250,000, $300,000 or more a year? I don't even know. Average, okay? So, you know, or, or median income, excuse me. Um, so you can imagine that is a much wealthier place than a lot of, I don't know, inner city school districts, for example, where the average in, average or the median income may be $30,000 a year or something like that, right? Or, you know, household income. Uh, so you can imagine the property taxes that are funding those schools are going to be completely, you know, it's going to be a completely different amount of money. You know, you got these houses over here in Alexandria, Virginia, that may be worth, you know, $1.52 million or more on an, you know, on an average basis. I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of making those numbers up. I have seen those numbers, but I, it's been so long that I have no idea what the median income and the housing prices are there. I'm just saying there's so much more than, they're so much more expensive, those houses, and the people make so much more money there than in a lot of other areas in the country, right? Um, so you you got two different uh, school systems that get funded vastly different. One has the best and the latest technology, can pay the teachers well. Uh, the schools are kept up. You know, the, the uh, buildings are kept up. They have air conditioning and heat and things like that. And you have other schools that may not have those things as much. And uh, so you can see the difference in the quality of the education the kids are probably getting in those two different uh, school systems. And uh, that's throughout the country. That's not just like in inner cities. You go to a lot of different rural, rural areas. Like you go to Appalachia, for example, and the, a lot of, most of the people there are poor. And, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're at or under the poverty level in a lot of cases. And... You can imagine the school systems there are, are very underfunded because they're basing it off of property tax in local areas. So, you know, a lot of people support school choice. Uh, I support school choice. Why? Because when you don't 
when someone doesn't support school choice here in America, it means they are literally they are literally agreeing to lock a child into a failing school district. A parent doesn't have the, uh, for example, a parent, let's take a parent in an inner city school, right? A parent in an inner city uh, school district. They are, they're at the poverty level. They don't have the money to pay for a private school, uh, but they want to, they want to uh, be able to get, uh, take their kid to a school district that's, you know, might be 10 or 15 miles away, right? But because they can't have school choice, they're locked into the school in their zip code, basically. And so they're locked into a felony school when the parent and the child want to go to the other school, but they aren't allowed to have school choice. So don't ask me why we don't have school choice in this country. I think it's, it's, it's ridiculous that we don't. Uh, every child, no, no child should be locked into a felon school if their parents are willing and wanting to drive their child to a school 15 miles down the road. Uh, and that's the problem with funding schools with property taxes, um, it, you know, on a local level, because it's just it, you know, it just doesn't make sense. We need to do it more. At the minimum, on a state level, I don't necessarily think schools should necessarily be on the federal level because the U.S. is so big. But I think each state, the funding should come from each state on a kind of a more equal basis per student in a way. But, you know, it doesn't, you know, I guess none of that is uh, nothing I can control. So it's just something, uh, one of those things that I think we definitely need to improve in the U.S. I think it's one reason why... Uh, a lot of students do fail in the U.S. is because so many schools are underfunded because they're in areas that uh, simply the property taxes are, you know, the uh, the houses aren't as valuable as other areas. So the property taxes aren't as much. Makes sense, right? Uh, but yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, enough rambling for me. Thank you so much for stopping by. I learned a lot on this video. Um, I'm going to go back through it just to kind of pick it up again because I'm like, it was really interesting. And guys, if you have any videos about either the UK or Ireland schools and educations, any level, anything you think I'd find interesting. Uh, one thing I definitely want to look up is uh, the school lunches in the UK versus America to kind of see what that's like, because I know. Yeah, we'll get into it at a later time uh, what, about the American school lunches. But uh, anyways, guys, please feel free to share those types of videos. I love them. I, I definitely want to explore them if I can find good videos. So feel free to share them if you have them. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.